Okay, so now we're gonna do a short video on setting up your controls in RetroArch. So this will be for more advanced control setup for hotkeys, or uh, if your controllers don't work after setting them up in Emulation Station, you may have to do this. It usually won't be necessary, but you can customize them however you want. So, from a track mode, you're gonna hit Tab, okay, to bring up, or actually, you're gonna, sorry, my bad, go into a track mode settings right here. So I'm just gonna hit Enter on a track mode settings, or with your controller, you can hit A if you've set that up already. So, we're gonna go to RetroArch, and this will be for your global setup for your controllers, okay? You can set them up per core um, or per game, but we'll go over that in a minute. So this is going to launch a RetroArch. You're going to want to pick up your controller. If your controller doesn't work, use a keyboard to navigate. Okay. So we're going to go down to settings. Hit A. Go to input. Okay. And for your player one, okay, I, I recommend using wired controllers for RetroArch at all times. A lot of people don't. That's just my personal preference. I have issues with wireless controllers because sometimes if it disconnects or goes to sleep when you're in the bathroom or whatever, um, when you come back, your controller's off and you turn it back on and RetroArch will map it in a new port and you won't have any controls over the game. The only way to get it back is to close RetroArch, which means you could lose your save and then start it up again. So if you use a wired controller and an auto config, it always works just like a regular console. You'll never have to worry about <clears throat> excuse me, losing controls or anything else. But it's up to you. So go to user one binds, okay? You're gonna hit A here. Now let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and go bind all. Okay. And it's going to bring up all my buttons one at a time, and you just go through them just like we did with Emulation Station, okay? So we'll go ahead and hit Bind All. The one thing to pay attention to is it wants your B button to be down, your Y button to be left. It's kind of backwards from a lot of stuff. It's set up just like a Super Nintendo controller. So B button is actually A. It'll be your button to go forward, and the A button will be your button to go back. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to hit Bind All. B button, Y button, select button, start button, up, down, left, right, A, X, left shoulder, right shoulder. That's all the buttons I got, so I'm going to sit here and let it time out on the rest of the inputs. Okay, and then I'm going to go save auto config. Okay, that'll save the auto config for this controller on user one. Now you're going to go back, and you can do the same thing for user two binds if you have a second controller plugged in or you have one you plan to use. Okay, I'm not going to go through that because it's exactly the same. So now we can go um, input hotkey binds. Okay, this is where you can do all your special commands. So, let's see. First, we're going to enable the hotkey. Otherwise, when you press a button to set it, it'll actually do that action. And we don't want that. We don't want it to work unless we're holding down the hotkey. So, scroll down to enable hotkey. Okay. Hit A. And then I'm going to use select. I recommend everybody do that, but you can set it to whatever you want. Okay. I'm going to hit the select button. It'll explain it to you, but we'll do that here, so no worries. Okay, so now that will enable hotkeys. I'm going to go back to the top. So anything you set in here or map to a, a button on your controller will only work while you're holding the select button down. So it gives you a whole new set of controls um, for the settings and other things within RetroArch while you're playing a game without having to exit the game or come in here and change settings, okay? Fast forward, okay? I don't set any of those up. You can if you like. Load state and save state. I recommend you do these. Okay. I went, let's see, 
I went with A and B on these. You can set them to whatever you want. Just remember that you have to be holding down select. So load state will load whatever your last save state was. Save state will save the game exactly where you are. You could be in the middle of a jump and it'll save it right there. Okay, quit retro arc. You're going to want to make that one the start button. Um, by default, it's already select and start at the same time in emulation station and, and uh, a track mode. But if that's not working, then it's not going to it's not going to work. You'll have to set it manually. Okay, save state slot. So I believe you get ten slots for every single game. So if you have more people in your house that are going to want to save more than one slot, you're going to use these. Okay, set one for save state plus, save state minus, and then it'll show you at the bottom of the screen which save state slot you're on uh, when you change those. <clears throat> okay, so set a button for each of those, and then. Set them up in a way that you're going to remember it. Okay, next shader, previous shader. I set up buttons for these. Looks like I missed previous shader, which we're going to... I may not have enough buttons, so we'll leave that. Okay, so this will automatically change the shaders that are built into RetroArch um, in, a, in Emulation Station, in RetroPie, basically all around. Um, this can make it look like an old retro C CRT television. It can make it... Uh, it can improve the graphics dramatically. Sometimes it'll smooth them out. It depends on which one you like. So you can experiment with those. Uh, when you're in a game, you'll hold down select and hit the button that you put for next shader, and it'll toggle through them until you find one that you like. It's pretty cool. Okay, let's see what else do we have. Now you can set them for any of these. Volume, you can set it so you can change your volume in-game from your controller, or if you have an arcade cabinet, it comes in handy if you don't have a volume knob. Okay. The only other one that I use is menu toggle. Okay. So that'll open your quick menu. By default, it's select and X in RetroPie, but again, if you're doing this because your controllers aren't working, then that's not going to work for you. So set that to whatever button you want. Just remember what button it is. And that's it. Your hotkeys are set up. Okay. So next, there's only one more thing to do. Um, some people like to enable save on exit, which is right here in configuration. I'm going to go ahead and leave that off, okay? Uh, because if you make a mistake and then you back out, it'll save that mistake permanently. So you want to have to actually do it manually, in my opinion, okay? So you're going to go to configurations here on the main screen, save current configuration, okay? Done. Now, we're going to exit RetroArch, so you go to quit RetroArch, okay, and we're going to